This is Damon L. Jacobs, and I'm still sassy at Love Out Loud, part seven, with the beautiful, gorgeous, Emmy-nominated Colleen Zeke. Hello, Damon. How are you? I'm good, honey. How are you? I am so, I'm so thrilled to see you, and I'm Thank so you. glad to be at this event. Now, this event, I mean, it's a lot of fun, but we're here also, we're raising some really important funds for a very important cause. Tell me about your relationship with the AIDS Walk and raising funds for people living with HIV and AIDS. Well, my, my relationship with, with the AIDS crisis and the, the movement goes back to the early 80s when I first came, I was in New York for a number of years and all of my high school male friends who came to work in the theater, either as actors, singers, designers, musicians, I lost every single one of them except one. I lost my entire family of young male friends all within a three-year period and and of course back then no one really understood or knew what was going on and I remember even my first friend who died his parents wouldn't even talk about it. They told everyone he had been hit by a taxi stepping off the curb and um, it, you know we've come a long way um, I also then, when I moved to Connecticut, I was involved with the very first AIDS hospice between New York City and Boston called Bread and Roses. And uh, we were, we were a, a home hospice for HIV patients that the entire community embraced in a little town in Connecticut. And I sat on the board of directors there for over 10 years. And there was so much fear at that time. There People was. feared that if you touch somebody, if you exactly. hug somebody with AIDS, that you get it. I mean, even my, my mother, who, who was actually an ER nurse back, back in the early days, it kind of drove her out of the ER because there was so much fear. There was so much fear. Nobody understood. How were you able to get over that fear and still be available and do all this wonderful work in the well, early days? Well, I didn't... I, I, I mean, my fear in the early days had more to do with, with hugging and kissing and embracing my friends. And I, I did not work, as my mother did, working with bodily fluids or, or blood, um, which is a very different thing when you're in the medical profession. I mean, for me, it was... Um, having to watch my friends go through what they went through and then not have them be here anymore. Devastating. And, you know, and now everyone can, not everyone, but most people who are diagnosed with HIV can live and get through it and live with HIV. And it's, we've come a long, long way in we 20 sure years. Um, and thanks to the, aid, the money that's being raised for the AIDS walk, right. people with HIV and AIDS are able to live longer quantity and quality lives exactly. as well and I know you've also been very vocal about the need for vaccines for all things can you tell me more about the yes of uh, yes I mean um, in my case as a yeah. two-time oral cancer survivor the the Gardasil vaccine is a vaccine that will prevent not only cervical cancer because of the HPV virus but also oral cancer there are two st there, are, there are hundreds of strains of the HPV virus and two of them cause cervical cancer and two of them cause oral cancer and the Gardasil vaccine will prevent against that and of course the FDA came out recommending the vaccine just for young girls in the beginning and everyone kept saying excuse me this is sexually transmitted you can't vaccinate half the population and then two years later they finally came out as a recommendation to vaccinate boys as well so I'm really behind all of that um, Canada is behind that Canada gives out the vaccine free wow. and we have to pay for it in the United States and it's rather oh expensive and it's not most most health health policies do not right. cover it but it is very important. Well, and, and you also know that I do HIV vaccine research yes. and that we are in a phase two clinical trial that yes. is looking to make it possible so that we would have an effective vaccine as well for people that are negative for HIV and AIDS. So future generations are going to see HIV the way most of us have seen polio in our lifetime. Right, right. Um, it'll be wiped out eventually. It will be, it will be. Eradicated. Um, and, and in the meantime, education is so important for people in both prevention and treatment. We now understand that if someone is taking treatment for HIV, that they're like at least 96% less likely exactly. to be able to give it to another person exactly. with it if their viral load is down to zero. And one of the many services that we're raising money for tonight is GMHC, which does provide and help people get thank access God to that treatment. Thank God for GMHC. I mean, it's, yeah. thank God. Yeah. It's wonderful. You know, a lot of times we think as in the gay male community about the impact of AIDS, and we forget that our allies, the women and the people, the straight people we love, have been impacted and survived this as well. All of us have. Yeah. All of us have been impacted in one way or another. Yeah. And I, I think I think the gay community feels it much more deeply. But all of us are affected. Yes. Well, and you are kind of an honorary gay man, let's face it. I, thank you. You are. I'll take that. <laughs> we have to think of that. I love that. <laughs> Now, I'm wearing my suit. <laughs> <laughs> All 
one, looking forward, yeah. I am so excited because I love, well, I love seeing you in person, but I also love seeing you perform live. Aww. I love your one woman show. Thank I you. love that you just, you always light up. I mean, you lit up on Barbara Ryan and As the World Turns, but you also light up the stage. Thank you. And it's just in a way that, that if anyone hasn't seen it, they can't explain, but you just radiate when you're on stage. So give me some good news. Okay, the good news is I will be opening on June 19th, the 20th and the 21st at the Cap 21 Theater in still. Yes, I am still sassy. And um, I will be there for three nights as a part of their um, benefit series for the summer for the Cap 21 Theater. Um, all proceeds from the ticket sales, anything that, that you buy that night, there will be liquor. Um, uh, <laughs> you heard that. Um, will be towards their scholarship fund for their conservatory and also for their, their theater company. So those of us who are performing this summer, Karen Mason will be there for a week. I'm there for a week. Uh, Deborah Barsha, Megan Duffy, and I can't remember who else is coming, but everything it's, it's a whole summer series of, of benefit concerts, and all the proceeds will go back to into the theater. And you are always so generous about contributing and giving back, and that's another thing I really admire Thank about you. you a lot. Thank you. And I have special guests coming for each of my shows. Special guests? I know. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that my fabulous Trent Dawson will be back with me again. He has to give me a give me a, an update tonight when I see him uh -huh. um, but I do have some other guests coming to sing with me as well and the show is going to be expanded from what it was in the fall so I have a lot of new music coming okay and so now, if you saw me before you have to come back and see me again <laughs> is it possible that any of these special guests are people that I may have seen on my television screen at some point I possibly yes. on daytime television or elsewhere Yes. Okay. Just checking. I know it gets me. Okay. All right. Well, Colleen, I love speaking with you. Thank, Thank you for you, being here. Thank you for being part of this event. Always giving back to the community. It's Thank so you. important. It is. You're inspirational for, for me. Thank so. you. Thank you.